Let's start with this example. Find the derivative of g of x equals the definite integral from zero to x of t times the secant of t dt. Solution. To do this, we're going to use something called the fundamental theorem of calculus, FTC part one. So some people call this part one of the fundamental theorem. It basically says you take the derivative with respect to x of the definite integral from a to x of f of t dt, you're just gonna get f of x. And this is true as long as f is continuous, this theorem is true. So basically, you can differentiate an integral and you just get back the original function. In this particular case, our f of t is the secant of t times t, so t secant t, that's our f of t. And then our a is zero and our x is x. So g prime of x is gonna be equal to, so if f of t is t secant t, if you look at the formula, all you do is you plug in x. So you just take this x and you put it where the t's are. It's super easy. So it's x secant x, boom, that's the answer. So it's really that easy. As long as there's a number here on the bottom, and there's an x up here, when you take the derivative, you just plug in the x and that's the answer. Let's do another example. This example is a little bit harder. Find the derivative of f of x equals the definite integral from x to two of cosine of t to the fourth with respect to t solution. So you'll notice that the x is in the bottom here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the top. And so recall that you're allowed to do that as long as you put a negative sign outside the integral. This will be negative, and then we can flip the limits of integration. The x is gonna go up top, and the two is gonna go on the bottom. And this is cosine of t to the fourth dt. So now it matches the formula for FTC, which is the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part One. We have the x up top, and the a is two. So in this case, our f of t is simply the cosine of t to the fourth. When we take the derivative, we just put an x where the t is. It's really that simple. So f prime of x is equal to cosine, oh, let's not forget the negative, <laughs> this is negative cosine of x to the fourth. So even though it's simple, it's easy to mess up. Always be careful. Really fun problems. All right, let's do something a little bit different. In this next example, we are going to integrate cosine x from zero to pi over two. So to do this, we're going to use the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So FTC, and this is part two. And this basically says, if you have the integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x, it's equal to big F of b minus big F of a where big F is called an antiderivative for little f. That basically means if you take the derivative of big F, you're gonna get little f. So big F is an antiderivative. So let's go ahead and integrate this problem. I'm going to show you how, how to do it. And then I'm going to explain why we're actually using you know, FTC part two. So when we're integrating this, we first look at the cosine and you ask yourself, what's a function whose derivative is gonna give you cosine? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, therefore the integral of cosine is sine. So this definite integral, zero to pi over two, cosine x with respect to x. So since the derivative of sine is cosine, the integral of cosine is sine. So you write sine x. You don't put the plus c because it's a definite integral. They're gonna, the c's would go away, I'll show you. And then you go from zero to pi over two. You can use a bracket or you can use a line or you can use two brackets. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. Then you plug in the top number first. So this is the sine of pi over two minus and then the sine of zero. The sine of pi over two is one, sine of zero is zero. So you just get one as the answer. So that's how you actually work out the problem. You basically integrate cosine, again, asking yourself, what's a function whose derivative is cosine? You get sine, you write a bracket, you write the numbers there, 
you plug in the pi over two first, you subtract, you plug in the zero, you get your answer. So this is actually the fundamental theorem of calculus. So basically, our, our big f of x in this example is sine x, right? It's, it's, it's an antiderivative because if you take the derivative of big f, you're going to get cosine x, right? So big f is an antiderivative um, for, for cosine x. And this piece here, sine of pi over 2, is big f of pi over 2. And this piece here is big f of 0. So it matches the fundamental theorem. So even though we did it without really thinking about it, I kind of just showed you how to do it, um, it actually is the FTC part 2. In this last example, we're going to do the same thing we just did, except it's a little bit more challenging. So we have to integrate x plus 1 times x minus 2, and we're going from 0 to 1. So we don't really have a product rule for integrals. So what we're going to do here is just distribute. This is going to be the definite integral from 0 to 1. So x times x is x squared. And then x times negative 2 is going to be negative 2x. And 1 times x is x. And then 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Parentheses, and we have our dx. Remember, it's always really important to write down the integral sign until you actually integrate, okay? So this is the definite integral from 0 to 1. We can combine some terms here. We've got a minus 2x and a positive x. That's going to become minus x. So this is x squared minus x minus 2, and then we have a dx. And this is pretty easy to integrate, right? So this is equal to, this will be x cubed over 3 using the power rule. You just add 1 and divide. There's an exponent here of 1 on the x, so 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get minus x squared over 2. And then for the constant, you just attach an x. A really simple integration. And we're going from 0 to 1. And as before, you plug in the top number first. So this is going to be equal to plugging in the top number. 1 cubed is 1, so we get 1 third. Minus 1 squared is 1, so we get 1 half. Minus, and then 2 times 1 is, is just 2. Minus, and then when you plug in 0 for all the rest of it, you're going to get 0 over 3. Right, 0 cubed over 3 minus 0 squared over 2 minus 2 times 0. So all of this is going to be 0. So that just goes away. To subtract these fractions, we have to find a common denominator, which is going to be 6. So let's make it happen. We have 1 over 3. I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2, because 2 times 3 is 6. We have 1 over 2. I'll multiply by 3 over 3, because 3 times 2 is 6. And we really have 2 over 1, so I'll multiply by 6 over 6, because 6 times 1 is 6. And now multiplying straight across, it's 2 over 6 minus 3 over 6 minus 12 over 6. Fractions. <laughs> Fractions take a lot of practice. Uh, so we have 2 over 6 minus 3 over 6 minus 12 over 6. So, so 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So we have minus 1 over 6 minus 12 over 6. And then subtract these and you get uh, minus 13 over 6. And that would be the answer to this problem. Kind of a, a little bit messy, but the idea is really simple, right? You integrate, you plug in that top number first, subtract, plug in the bottom number. Hopefully you've learned some math in this video, and hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you feel like you did, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck and take care.